Okay, we're going to talk about Saturn's iconic rings today. Here we go. First part of section 6.4. Well, it turns out that uh, rings seem to be a common uh, thing in the universe. Uh, all four of our uh, gas giant planets, also sometimes called the Jovian planets, all four of them have rings. Saturn's, though, are in a different league than all the rest. Um, the rings were actually technically first seen by Galileo, but he wasn't quite sure what they were. He kind of drew a little, a couple lobes on the side of it in his notebook, and he left it alone for some reason. So Galileo, we associate with Jupiter a lot, but not with Saturn. Instead, one of the names we associate is Christian Huygens, uh, who was a Dutch uh, physicist and astronomer. He came up with the wave theory of light, uh, kind of a rival of uh, Isaac Newton's in that regard. Uh, but anyway, Huygens uh, identified them as rings. Um, another name associated with Saturn is Cassini, who discovered, I think, four of Saturn's moons. And we'll get to these names again when we talk about the, the great mission that went to Saturn, the Cassini mission. Uh, Cassini also then uh, broke up the rings into three areas, A, B, and C, which we still use today, although we've extended it to other, uh, many more rings. Um, and the, the biggest gap in the rings is between uh, rings A and B, so-called rings A and B. And so today we refer to that as the Cassini division. And even in a backyard telescope, um, you can see that usually pretty well. Um, I, I always kind of judge whether it's a clear night and whether I can see what's called the ink gap, which is a small, much smaller gap all within the A ring um, that Cassini missed. But anyway... Uh, we can see that, at least with our school telescope, at times, if we're lucky. Um, the person that, that came along, uh, one of the great physicists of the 1800s, James Clerk Maxwell, who we normally associate with electricity and magnetism, he actually did the calculation that uh, a giant ring couldn't actually exist. You couldn't have a big solid ring. Uh, the physics doesn't work out. So he's the first one to say, hey, this has to be a bunch of, of particles. I think a lot of students think that they're rocky particles, but they're actually mostly ice, as we'll see in just a, a bit. Um, here you can see there is the ink gap, and then this is actually the Cassini division up in this area. We'll get to see a better shot here. So, uh, and if you're thinking, wait, that doesn't that that's the division. It looks like there's stuff there. There is stuff there. There, is, you know, it's hard to have a true true gap, um, but. Um, the ink gap is actually has less material. It's not as big, but the ink gap right here. So this is all the A ring, B ring, C ring in here. Goes from the outside in. And uh, when when Voyager passed by, look at that. They discovered there are actually just thousands and thousands of rings, rings of these icy particles going around. All right. Uh, these particles are, as I mentioned, uh, mostly ice, 95% ice or so, uh, based on how reflective they are. We know that, and their density and so forth. So the average size might be something like this, but that's kind of misleading because you can have just the tiniest little flakes everywhere, and you can have giant icebergs out there floating around the size of buildings. So, you know, yeah, that's the average, I suppose, but there's kind of a wide range, we think, uh, in the rings. And despite all that, it can be, can be incredibly thin. This is amazing. I mean, these rings, you have to understand, they're wider, much, much wider than the Earth. You can put several Earths across the rings, and yet it's only the, the thickness going through it this way would be like the, I don't know, like a basketball court or something. I mean, that, that's insane how thin they are. That's why they almost disappear in the Saturnian fall and spring, when they're edge on to us, see if I can do this correctly, when they're edge on to us like so, they practically disappear because they are so incredibly thin, as you'll see in the pictures. Um, really important term here, the Roche limit. Uh, Roche was a mathematician, and uh, we're going to have his name a couple times this year. Here's the first time. Roche said, look, if a moon gets too close, it's going to get torn up. As, as the gravity increases, and, and uh, you know, you learn in basic physics, the centripetal force increases. That means the acceleration increases. And uh, it's a lot of force on it, what we call tidal stress. Uh, the same reason that, you know, Io is volcanic. Uh, but in this case, 
if you're even closer than Io is to Jupiter, eventually it just breaks the moon up. So Roche said, you can't simply have large moons very close to planets. So I think of the Roche limit as kind of like the border uh, between rings and moons. Within the Roche limit, you can have rings. Outside of the Roche limit, you can have uh, large moons. It's kind of neat. Look at that. Look at that. So here you have the super thin ring from the side. And there's one of the moons, which again is outside the Roche limit, which allows it to uh, survive there and not break up. Rhea, I think, is uh, Saturn's second largest moon. I remember right. There's the little moon Janus, and you can see very faintly a ring out there that we'll talk about in a bit. There's the ink gap. This is all considered the A ring. There's the Cassini division, and then you get to the very bright uh, B ring. After that, oh, there they are. Labeled for you. A ring and B ring. And, okay. Anyway, Voyager, as I already mentioned, saw thousands of rings. And um, there are some small gaps that are truly gaps. Um, and guess what I found? That the only reason those are truly gaps is because they have little tiny moons, moonlets, if you will, that actually go through and sweep out the ring. And I don't know who gets to decide which, which particles count as moons and which ones are moonlets and which ones are just particles. I guess it doesn't really matter too much. But anyway, for example, one of the moons, the one that carves out the ink gap we saw earlier, uh, the moon Pan, it does count as an official moon of Saturn. And it's inside the ring, so it's pretty cool. Where do you see that one? Oh, here it is, right here. Look at that. So it's been, it's been busy. It's just sweeping out its own path there in the rings. Pretty neat. Pan. Okay, the F ring is, is really an interesting ring. It's the one that we saw a few minutes ago that just kind of stands out on its own past the main ring system. Um, and for a long time, they, they didn't understand how is that possible? Why would it be out on its own? How could it sustain itself? And uh, then they discovered there are two really small moons on each side of it that, that keep that stream of particles in place, kind of like sheep and uh, shepherd dogs keeping the sheep in a line. So that's why they call them shepherd moons, uh, one on each side of the F ring, which is pretty darn cool. There they are. Look at that. You can see them here on the right-hand side. One, two. Those are the two little shepherd moons. I'm trying to think which two those are. Either, I think it's I think it's Janus and Epimetheus, if I remember right, are the two shepherd moons. Um, and they cause some weird things to happen in this. Remember, it's not a solid thing. And so here you get some disruptions in the stream of icy particles, the stream of snowballs, if you will, and you get some weird kinks and braids in the ring. So it's a very strange, interesting little ring there, the F ring of Saturn. There's one of those little kinks in it. Okay. Um, the moon Mimas is kind of a medium-sized moon that's just outside of the rings. And the ring particles closest to it, that would be the A ring, um, they actually resonate with Mimas. They're, they're kind of in sync with its gravity. Remember, they're kind of caught in a, a bit of a tug of war then between Mimas, which is very close, and mighty Saturn. And so that's actually created, we think, the Cassini division. So the Cassini division is just a result of sort of a gravitational uh, tug of war uh, between the much closer Mimas and, and, uh, and Saturn. Pretty neat. Pretty neat stuff. Uh, this was a, a fairly new discovery. This giant dust ring, I haven't heard much about it, but uh, it was found in the infrared by the Spitzer Space Telescope. Pretty cool. Um, so where do these rings come from? Well, first, first thing you need to know is, they're, they're so huge, right? They spread out so far. But if you take your uh, space uh, bulldozer and just, you know, shove all those particles together, you don't get much. You really don't. You get about uh, the mass of a medium-sized moon, or really a small moon. Um, it's just not that much stuff there. Um, the one thing, so one possibility, of course, is that you had a moon that size that was destroyed. Maybe a couple moons, really small moons that collided. I guess that's another possibility. 
uh, that a moon just got too close and uh, was torn up within the Roche limit. I think that's the most likely thing. Um, the one thing that most astronomers agree on is that the rings are really brand new. I mean, we're talking about maybe 50 million years old. That's it. So they weren't even close to forming when Saturn itself formed, um, you know, four and a half billion years ago. So 50 million years is just brand new. Um, there's, there are other possibilities. It could have been a comet or what we call a Kuiper Belt object uh, from the outer icy parts of the solar system that came in and, and were destroyed. Um, anyway, the, the leading theory is that something icy was destroyed uh, to form these rings. Okay, I believe it's time to take a look at one of the greatest pictures ever taken in the history of astronomy. This is from the Cassini mission. Um, it, it was just, it was just mind blowing. Uh, it's made a lot of posters, that's for sure. Uh, let's take a look from when Cassini swung around the backside of Saturn, and there it is. There it is. That's a real picture. It's a real picture. It's unbelievable. So this was in the mid. Uh, 2000s in the first decade um, of the 21st century that we took this amazing, amazing picture. You can kind of see it looks like maybe the sun. Uh, remember, this is taken from from behind Saturn, where the, the, the spaceship has gone um, on the opposite side of Saturn from the sun. Uh, that might look like the, be the sun peeking out there a bit. And so it backlights the whole thing. Now, normally, most planets, for example, if this was... Uh, Mars or Mercury, a place like that, then this this part of the planet would be totally totally dark. Uh, but you actually have so much ring shine from these icy particles that they're actually you know lighting up the back of Saturn, which is why we can even see it at all. Why it's just so gorgeous. I'm going to talk in the next lecture about this 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 ring we haven't talked about way out here. That's not that dust ring that I talked about. This is yet another ring, an icy ring that's farther out. Um, it's called the E-ring, and there's a reason I'm going to save that for a, a later lecture. Um, but by the way, just in case you are not impressed, again, I think this is one of the greatest pictures ever taken. Um, just in case you're not impressed, though, maybe you don't realize this. Uh, you're in the picture. Yeah. Yeah, the Earth is actually photobombing the picture. Oh, I can't see it on my, my screen. You're so dirty. Uh, there it is, I believe, right in there. Right there to the left. That little dot. That's Earth from a billion miles away. That's what we look like. And we just happen to be captured looking through those thin rings and seeing us, again, a billion miles in the background in the picture. Just incredible. Absolutely incredible. All these pictures from Cassini, just, they're stunning. They're stunning. Uh, I really miss Cassini. Of course, the Cassini mission um, ended in 2017, uh, just a few months before I made this this video. They finally uh, they finally dove into Saturn as it was losing fuel. They wanted to uh, not risk running into any moons and contaminating any moons, so they went ahead and dove into Saturn. Uh, there's the Earth there, I guess, uh, right there. Sometimes I think in some of the pictures you can actually see see our moon as well. And I've seen pictures like this from Cassini with Venus, for example, in the background as well. Um, let me just go back to the main picture. That is just amazing. Cassini, one of the great missions uh, in the history of NASA. There's actually a mission, uh, NASA, uh, European Space Agency, the Italian Space Agency working together in a multi-billion dollar mission. But man, it was wildly successful. Okay. Um, that's it for the rings of Saturn. Next time we're going to talk about the moons, which are also just awesome. Thanks for listening.